that you're doing well today. Um, it's one o'clock on Friday, my time, Eastern Standard Time. And um, thank you so much for the reactions to the video um, last week about um, introducing the quilt and introducing myself. And you said that this would be helpful. Uh, so I am here today to talk about all of the fabric requirements. And in fact, just one second. Sorry, life goes on and my son it has a tuba lesson at the same time, which uh, he obviously did not inform me until right before, um, right before this started. So anyway, for those who um, don't know me or who did not watch the first video, my name is Cheryl Bricky. Um, I am the designer behind Meadow Mist Designs. Um, you can watch the other video for a little bit about myself, but uh, I think that the kickoff um, has gone really well. I'm really enjoying seeing everyone's fabric, everyone putting input in, and it's just so much fun because I have my own style and so I always imagine the quilts in a certain fabric and it's always great to see the different color combinations and different things that everyone else is coming up with. So I'd asked um, uh, for everyone, if they sent any questions, I'm going to try to answer those in addition to the tips. But I do have, I can see the screen while I'm talking. So if you guys have any questions while I'm talking, or you want me to go into it a little bit more, I definitely will. So now we know that the mystery quilt takes four fabrics, A, B, C, and D, and a background fabric. Um, and the really nice thing about this design, one of the th reasons I think it is so versatile, is that none of the A, B, C, and D fabrics are next to one another. So that means you don't have to worry about the contrast between your, you know, the two fabrics, the A and B, how do they look? They could be really similar, and in fact, they can actually be the same if you, if you really wanted to. Um, if, in fact, you could make it a two color quilt. You could have the background and have A, B, C, and D all the same color. I like a little bit more color than that, but that would totally work. Um, so a lot of your fabric choices are just, they're all gonna look excellent as long as you like the contrast between um, the background and those fabrics. So all of my tips are kind of, they're, they're how I, pick out fabrics and design. There's no right way or wrong way. If you want to make a neon orange quilt with background with neon orange patches, you're not going to have much contrast. The pattern isn't going to show up as well, but that is, it's your quilt. The only one you have to please is yourself. You do not have to please me at all. You don't have to please anyone else. Um, if you're giving it away, obviously, I guess you'd want to please them too. Um, so just starting out talking about backgrounds, I have a whole bunch of fabric all around here, so hopefully, hopefully you'll be able to see it pretty well. So for backgrounds, you know, just a solid works really well. Um, solids are great because, I mean, manufacturers have half a billion of them. I mean, here's Moda's, you know, it's like, which one do you want? Um, Robert Kaufman has a color for every day. They tend to be less expensive. Uh, and you know, a lot of local quilt shops have a really good selection of solids nowadays. Um, you can also buy them, um, online. You can buy them by the bolt, you know, if color, like I like to use white a lot. I, I tend to buy that by the bolt, but really solids are my go-to for backgrounds because it is four and a quarter yards, I believe, um, is what it is. And so, you know, a print might be more like 12 to $14 a yard, whereas a solid might be eight to $10 a yard. So it would save you a little money. Um, so that's my first thing is a solid. The next one um, are very subtle patterns and it's, you know what, it's not even showing up with this, with this camera. This is actually a blue fabric and it has little tiny white um, kind of, lightning bolts. It's a batik um, from Hoffman. So kind of that one that just has a little tiny bit of texture. You know, uh, this one, I'm going to hold this up to the thing. You can see it. This is a hashtag by Kral and Friedlander. This is always one of my favorites. You can see from far away, it reads as a solid, but from close up, it has a little texture. So any fabric that's mostly solid, that has a few little things around it, um, works really well. Um, Moda has a grunge. Uh, these I think would work really well. Um, and they also, I mean, 
I have the mode of grunge right here. You know, once again, so many different colors. You can probably find anything you want there. And a lot of the other ones, uh, the other fabric manufacturers, they have ones they're printed to kind of look like a canvas or like a leather, um, all sorts of things. So I recommend, because you can see from the thing, almost half the quilt is going to be background. And it is gonna be, it's all over, it's all between all the other fabrics, but it's gonna be a lot. It's gonna be about half the quilt is gonna be this, this one color. So the things I would not recommend, like this, I love this print so much I made a dress out of it, but making this into the background and chopping it all up, personally to my eye, would look very, very busy. So some of these larger scale prints, very, very multicolored, would probably not be the best choice. Um, and then here's one other one. This is a very cool batik that my mother got me um, when she was vacationing in the Caribbean. She brought me back fabric, she knows me well. Um, and this is an awesome print, but you can see once I start cutting this up into smaller pieces, there's some pieces that are gonna be totally orange here. There's gonna be some pieces that are red and white. So, so the problem with these are is that once you chop them up, they're not gonna look like one fabric. They're gonna look like almost a, a scrappier look which is not bad if that's what you're, you know, if you like that. Um, but if you want just the background to kind of recede and let the, the prints pop, this might not be the best choice for you. So I had a question about Scrappy and a lot with the background, it is a lot of fabric. So if you're looking to make the quilt and not purchase anymore and you don't happen to have, you know, four or four and a half yards sitting around your house, you know, you don't have to use just one. If you can see, I'm gonna come up to the camera. You can see all of these are just kind of white, low volume, tone on tone. You can see like from the back, of course, this is not the best camera. They all kind of read the same. So this is one way if you wanted to have a background and you don't have the four yards, you want to use some stuff from Stash, you can use multiple, you can use eight, 10, whatever you can have. Um, if you were doing that, I would make sure that you chop up you know, if it's 30 of one size and 30 of another, I wouldn't cut all 30 of one size out of this and then all 30. I would kind of try to mix it up of cutting various sizes from the various pieces. So that way they kind of wind up in the, in the quilt a little scrappier. So that is one way, cause I know not everyone has, you know, four yards at home and I, I, I understand that. So that is my discussion on background. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, for those of you listening that are doing the mystery version, I am not gonna say anything, anything at all that gives away the mystery. Um, just giving you helpful tips based off of what the instructions are you've already seen. So you don't have to worry about that. So let's see. So talking about the prints and how to pick them. Here we go, I'm gonna go to my next batch. One way I pick prints is I find a print that I like. So, for instance, this is, it's an older rifle um, paper company print back uh, um, when Cotton and Steel was with all of them. And I really like it. It's smaller scale, so even when I chop it up, it's gonna look pretty good. Um, and so, if I wanted to use this in the quilt, what I would do is, one thing you can do, Let's make sure that I still have the salvage on this one. Most of them, in fact, I chopped this, this one was just a fat quarter and so it has the opposite salvage. So sorry about that. But anyway, what I would do is I would find a color that kind of works with this. So you can see how I'm pulling the pinks out. Now, if this was a better camera and you were in my studio with me, um, you'd know that these two aren't exactly matching and they do not have to be exactly matching. I think that personally, when you have slight variations, it gives the quilt a little bit more interest. And remember, in the quilt, it's not gonna be like this, it's gonna be separated. So I have some of the pink and then I went through my boxes. I keep all my fabric like this. Salad tubs at Costco, excellent reuse of those. Here's a dark navy with little pluses on it. And that kind of pulls in some of it. It's actually darker than this actual, this fabric, but 
you know, it kind of grounds it. And then I pulled in, I actually don't even know what this is. I don't know when I got it. It kind of looks like a little bit of an ocean kind of, and it pulls in that kind of that little periwinkle. So you can see the three of the, you know, here's your four fabrics. They look really good together. And it's just was a matter of me going and just holding things up. And my sewing room gets really messy when I pick fabric. I have them all out. The real trick is to actually put it away when you're done. I sometimes forget that. And then like two weeks later, I still have fabric everywhere. So if I had these four prints, I would want to pick a background that didn't compete with them. I, I personally like it a more geometric look. So I wouldn't want to pick, if I picked like a light blue, this whole piece is going to kind of disappear into that, into that background. So for this one, I have, this is a, this is Kona Ash. It's a nice, it's a nice gray, very, very light with a, a little bit of a kind of a brown undertone. So putting those together, there you go. So all of this was just shopped from my stash. And I can just tell you for stash organization, when I am looking at these, these are all half yard and smaller cuts down to a, a fat quarter. Anything you see on a board means that I have, I, I have those little comic strip boards. These are three quarters a yard and up. So when I'm gonna, if I was to pick to make another version, I would make sure that I was shopping. You can't see it, it's two rungs here. That way, whatever I picked, I would probably have enough of. But I could also definitely pick some fat quarters and kind of get them to match. So that was one. Let me show you over here. This is a quilt I made. It's called um, Flock of Geese. I'm gonna back up so you can see more of it. I'm showing this to you because one, all of the prints that are used in this quilt are also just on a background. So you can see none of the prints are actually touching each other. So it's less important, you know, these can be the same value and it's okay because of the white space between it. And in this case, this is scrappier than um, my previous one. I really liked this print, which is another older, this is an older cotton and steel print um, from way back when. And so what I did was I pulled a bunch of these yellowy kind of greens. There's some grays, there's some of these green, and then some darker blues and then kind of a lighter blue. So you can see, I'm gonna back up so you can see as much of it as possible. You can see how by pulling all of those fabrics, um, all those colors out of that fabric, I, I didn't have to really think too much about the colorway. I found a fabric that I liked and I just started pulling inspiration from it. So that is something for you guys you can try. Okay, let's see, I have, Thing. So I figured someone was going to say, well, that's great, but I am not in love with white like you are, white and gray. If you wanted to start with a dark background. So in this case, I'm not starting with the prints. The previous one, I started with the four prints and then I found a background that worked. What if I just said, hey, you know what? This is Moda, um, Bella in Navy. Love it. It's a, it's a, it's a great one. I think I need a bolt of this too. Um, what if you knew you wanted to go make a dark quilt? This is going to a kid. You knew you didn't want a light background. So you wanted to start here. So if I was to go and do this one, I would start picking fabrics that popped off of this. So how about this one? You see how that pops out? This is one of the Ruby star um, sprinkles. It's really great because it's, it's kind of one of those. I love them. The blenders, the, the ones that look, just like has a little bit of texture, but reads kind of as a solid. And here's another two. Here's another one. Oh, well, here's a question. I will be talking about, um, yes. Okay. So we have some people that do not like gray or white either. Um, and I can totally understand that. So we have these two and then I went searching and I was like, well, because we're dealing with such a dark, I can throw some white in there. And this is a, can see it. I'm an engineer, so this is kind of a, uh, you know, all sorts of nerd fabric. So holding this up, I really need a helper or something. Sorry guys, this is, this is live. 
I have two of these. I have this peach, I have this kind of raspberry color, and then I have white. And then I was looking for a third one and I was actually stumped for a while. I, I looked at some grays and I looked at some other colors and I found, I found this one, which is, uh, I got this one from Joanne's from forever ago. It's a lot of John's daughter. And I kind of put that in there and I kind of liked the way that looked. And it kind of played off of the dark blue then. So the trick here is you just want to make sure that whatever fabrics you print goes and pops off of the, the background. And one way I think to do it, if, if you have a design wall, you can tack this up and kind of hold those up. I do not have a design wall. This, my, uh, my studio is our extra bedroom and it's the smallest one in the house. So there's just not room. So I have a, I have a, a floor and I'll put out the background on the floor and I will lay out the prints on them just to kind of see how it looks. So that was with kind of a darker background. So there was a question, will each fabric have a consistent size with the, all the other ones? They will not. Um, and so we will get cutting instructions in August and you can see those then. Um, if I had my little focal fabric, which where, where, where did it, wherever it went, Oh, now I've thrown it somewhere. Here we are. So if I had this one, I might decide there's going to be one fabric that has the largest pieces cut and one fabric that has the smallest. So I would probably, if I was going to design this, I'd probably use this as the largest one just because it's what I pulled everything else from. It's one of the most interesting. So I wouldn't want to cut it into the tiniest pieces. Whereas you'll see one of the fabrics gets cut into small pieces, you know, maybe use that one. You have, you have a solid or something that reads more as a solid. That would be a good choice for that one. Um, so directional prints, because of all the different piecing and how things are put together, if you're a real stickler that you like all the directional pieces to line up, I would suggest not using them or get the sneak peek and truly figure out where everything's going so that way you can figure that out. It's really difficult in a mystery quilt to make sure any way that any directional prints. I think that honestly, I think a directional print would probably work. I would just not use it for fabric A. That's your little hint. Um, everything else would probably work pretty well. So there's, um, I think that's all the questions there. Um, I have one more example. I just wanted to go, I really wanted to use this fabric. It is even more neon. How can we get how, an idea of how much fabric is needed? Um, yeah, well, right on the Facebook group, there's the link, you click it and you take, uh, taken, you get taken right to the blog post, which has all of the fabric requirements. Everything's there. And hopefully you can go and get stuff from your stash. Okay, so anyway, this is like a neon yellow. And I love it, except I bought it a long, long time ago and I never use it because it's really bright. Um, so I thought maybe combining it with some of these grays. So all the whites, the middle gray and the darker gray. And so in this case, I would probably pair these with a white as the background. So, you know, you don't have to have a lot of color. And in fact, um, a couple of the Bear Creek um, kits are just black and white, which I think would look really cool too. So those are my piles there. And even within the print, someone said, I only have fat quarters. Um, if you look at these, these are three different fat quarters. They're all basically black. Um, so if you only have fat quarters, if you have three that are similar, there's probably your three quarters of a yard. Just depending on cutting, you might wind up needing a little. I, I did not figure it out for fat quarters. So it just winds up sometimes cutting a fat quarter versus cutting a 40 inch wide. The piece counts wind up a little different. So if you have a bunch of these, that would work as one also. And if you're really good at scrappy, you could probably do the whole quilt scrappy. I am personally, as an engineer, I'm not as good as scrappy. Um, that is not my forte, but I have seen in each one of my mystery quilts, I'm kind of like, oh, well, you know, it has to be these four fab, you know, four fabrics. And each year I see people doing things scrappy that I'm just like, wow. So I, I'm, I'm always amazed. One other thing, 
What about prints that are related, as in animals and steampunk? Um, you could definitely do that. Some of the pieces are pretty small, um, yeah, especially in one of the fabrics. So anything, you know, if you have like flamingos on there and you're getting them cut down to little two inch squares, um, you know, you might be decapitating the flamingos and stuff, but I, I mean, whatever you feel, whatever you feel that works. And I would once again, lay out your background, put your choices on it, and they're not, they don't have to be touching because they're not going to be touching in the quilt, just to kind of get an idea of how things would look. Um, I, asking another question about directionality, I think I just answered that. Um, if it bothers you that stripes go different ways, I would stay away from them. Just because in a mystery quilt you can't really tell, you know, when you're cutting them and, and sewing them how they're all going to be placed. But, um... You know, definitely, I, it, you know, I think it would work in, in most of them. Don't, fabric A would be one that definitely I wouldn't do as a directional. Yes, no scrappy here again. I, I mean, I try to once in a while, but usually if you see one of my scrappy quilts, it's like all blue, all blue scraps. So, um, if you have a charm pack, there was some questions, would a charm pack work? I don't think that it would work well because they're just usually such different colors. And then, um... I don't know if any of the squares we're cutting are five inches so you're gonna have a lot a lot of waste but what you can do with your charm pack is that this one is a fun one sugar house by amy smart you can just look at the colors and you're like oh i love that minty green and you can see how she paired the colors with some red and you can pull inspiration from that and pick your favorite four colors from a charm pack and then go over pick some solids pick some other stuff and that would work um Here's one other quilt I'd like to show you. This is a quilt, um, it's called Trumpet Horns. I wanted to show you this one because um, once again, these all of the fabrics do, 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 are not touching each other and all of the fabrics are solids and the background actually has a print to it. It's subtle. It's a subtle print, but it is a print. So, you know, I would say if you were going to have a print for your background, you know, definitely, you know, tone down, tone down your other prints, but it could work. And someone, someone asked if you had a really crazy background, could you just do like, if you just had like this super crazy background, could you just piece everything the A, B, and C as just one other color, like white or a black? And it would, yeah, you could, um, it would be very interesting. So I don't think, I, I think I've answered all of those questions. Um, just looking. Yeah, so it's all about contrast. Oh, I'll show you mine. So this is what my quilt that I made. I used white as in my background because, well, you know, here's my bolt of white. I never run out. I, uh, I, you know, if I get down to like one bolt, I start like, oh my gosh, I need some more. Um, I think bolts are great to buy because they don't wrinkle as much. Um, they're always available. They're always then and you just you know, it's like almost never-ending You can get these from a lot of times your local quilt shop will, will order them for you And sometimes then they'll give you a little discount more if you're you know, you're buying 15 yards at a time and then there's some other um, other sources That will sell you Yardage and some will sell you the whole bolt so anyway This is my background and I chose to use four of the speckled fabrics. So these are my four, and I am not gonna tell you which ones I use for A, B, and C, D. I can tell you these are not in any particular order. Um, honestly, when I got the D, I got these two online, this one looked a little bit brighter. So I was kind of a little disappointed that that one was a little bit duller. Um, and then when I was putting them together, I was worried, see, this is almost not enough contrast for me. I only tend to be more contrast, but I figured, you know, I was I tried it, I rendered it in EQ8 just to make sure it would look good. And I'm very happy, you know, newsflash, I've already made the quilt. Um, it, I, I'm very happy with that. So even just that little bit of contrast does seem to work. So that is that. I had some other questions about, oh, making the quilt larger or smaller. This is a block-based quilt, um, so you can, to change the size, you can add borders. There are no borders on the quilt currently. Um, you can add, you can change the block size, 
or you can add more blocks. To make it smaller, someone said they only had three yards of fabric, how could they make it smaller? I think that you could make less blocks and I think that that would probably work. I would say to that person that you might, if you're really gonna start doing that and you wanna figure out what you're gonna be cutting and how everything's gonna work, I might do the sneak peek for that. Um, or once again, you know, instead of just using one print for the background, you know, kind of try to expand it and get all of those. What size prints can we use? Well, I can tell you, I think in this, is fabric A the main fabric, please? No, well, the background fabric, I mean, there's no, there's no one main fabric. Um, all four you can see that are used three quarters of a yard. They're all used about the same amount in in the quilt so there isn't really any main fabric there's the four prints and then the background um for the size of the prints um i think that i said on the fabric tips that the largest piece size we were cutting was about six and a half inches i think don't quote me on that um so you know it, it all depends like once again you know, here's, you know, here's a larger scale. I think that this would still work. I think, you know, a lot of mine are smaller scales. Once again, but this one, you know, this one's a large scale and this one would probably even work. It ha this is, uh, you know, printed and stuff. What I would do is if you had a really large scale and so you would want to go and when we get the cutting instructions, you'll see which fabric has the largest size cut from it. And that's the one I would probably use it for. Yes, yeah, so scale, that's what I think, I think you were asking. So the scale of the print. Um, so yeah, so the pieces are cut at about six and a half. So if it, you know, if it winds up that your scale's this big, I think we have, uh, I don't have a good example behind. Oh yeah, I have, this is pretty big scale. So, you know, if you wanted to, you know, make sure that you weren't chopping someone's head off, um, yeah, I don't know. The, the six and a half inches is, is, um, the largest the, is the piece size. So you'll have to just decide how that looks with a large scale. If it's a super large scale, I probably would, would skip it. But if it's a larger scale, it would, it would probably work. Can blocks be evenly divided to make two baby quilts? No, I don't think so. Um, you could definitely probably shrink it down, but not definitely not in not in half very well so yeah sorry about that um so that was that um someone asked if you have a really dark print or a really light print which which fabric would you say it should go I have actually taken four prints and I have rendered them in all sorts of different combos it all looks different there is not if you had a dark print and then some lighter prints. There's not one fabric that I would say you should pick that. Um, I would say, you know, you know, what's the scale of it? And I think all of them really kind of look good. So I, I don't really have, there isn't any one particular one if it was really dark. Um, I had a question about rulers. None of the pieces we're cutting are very large. They're just all standard. This is my, uh, my Ulfa ruler. This is my favorite one. It's a six inch by 24, 24 and a half. No, just 24. I have another one, six and a half by 24 and a half. I have, I have a couple other ones. They're all, they're, they're not very large pieces. Um, there's no crazy angles to cut or anything like that. I do, um, there will be half square triangles in the quilt. And this is my block lock ruler. And you can see that this little, this is actually um, cut out. And so it rests on the seam and this cuts any half square triangle for all the way from like half an inch all the way up to six and a half inches. So when I do do half square triangles, this is what I like to trim with. I like to trim with this and then one of these rotating boards just makes life, life a little easier. But yeah, there's no specialty rulers or anything, anything needed for that. Um, shrink it down fewer blocks or smaller blocks. I think I, I, I previously answered that. I think you could do, you could take the design down by some blocks. You couldn't take it down by half. Um, smaller blocks would definitely work. If you're gonna do that, I would, I would suggest getting the sneak peek so you can figure things out 
because the blocks I'll leave that to you that might be that might be a little tricky um, you're gonna maybe wind up with some if you shrink all of them you're gonna wind up with some funky kind of numbers uh, but but it can be it can be done if you wanted to do that uh, and with the quilt finishes at 60 by 72 about which is a really nice lap size and once again with a couple borders if you wanted to add those you could easily scale it up even bigger so I think that that was all that I had and those were all the questions those were all the questions that I got so um, just a note to all of my non mysteryers if that's a word please make sure that you don't spoil the surprise for anyone else this is my sixth year doing it my fifth year offering the mystery sneak peek and I'm able to offer it every year because no one ever shares it and that is awesome so the people that want to keep it a mystery can keep it a mystery but the people that do not want it as a mystery you know you don't have to have it as a mystery uh, but just make sure you sh you know when you start getting your blocks don't put your blocks together don't start saying, oh, well, you know, this is forming the this, so I'm going to use it. So, you know, just keep that to yourself. Um, yeah, the quilt is not square. So um, if there are any other questions, you guys can ask me anything. Oh, and if you want to get in touch with me, um, I am trying to do my absolute best at answering all of the questions that are coming from individuals as quickly as I can. I am just one person. There are so almost 7,000 people in the group right now. Almost 4,000 people asked for the sneak peek. Um, so you can imagine I've been, I've been getting a lot of emails. So if you signed up for the sneak peek and did not get it, if you sign, you know, if you had the sneak peek and you want to ask me another question, if you had the mystery, um, and you just want to be like, Hey, what do you think about this? I'd be happy to answer it and try to keep, you know, not give anything away. But I ask that if you can, email me at mmdmysteryquilts at gmail.com. So MMD for Meadow Mist Designs, mystery quilts, plural, mmdmysteryquilts at gmail.com. I have been getting in, I counted them. I've been getting questions in nine different ways. Um, everything from the 20th comment down to personal email, the mystery quilt email through my shop. I am trying my best not to miss any and to respond but if you have written to me in one something and you haven't gotten a response please let me know because I did not mean to do that um, oh there's a there's a question hold on would it work to alternate and use a design print for the background and then complementary solids um, yes no I, I answered that so if you had like a super crazy so background like this you know to your own eye, do splotches of white look? Well, um, you know, you can do that. Just lay it out on the ground, put it on, and, and see what your eye says. I mean, it might read too busy, or it might look really, really cool. Uh, the directional prints, you might have, um, you probably just tuned in a little late. Directional prints, if you want them to be super directional, and you want all the houses to face a certain direction, and I would not, I would not use those. Um, but you know, I, 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 I've used directional prints in them and you know, it doesn't bother me if sometimes they're, they're not touching or anything. Uh, they might be facing different directions. If you do use a directional print, I wouldn't put it in fabric A. That's the only one that I would say that probably wouldn't really work. Thanks for the info, everything. So I think that's everything. Um, so there was really great feedback about this. So I will be back next month. So the cutting instructions will be um, the first Thursday of August. I forget which day that is. So that Friday, the next day, I will be on and I will be giving you some tips and tricks. I guess I'll talk a little bit more about rulers, how I cut for accuracy, um, and all that fun stuff. So you have an entire month to go and gather all of your fabrics. And, you know, this is not supposed to be stressful. So if you love piecing much more than picking out fabrics we do have kits available um so the uh you know we have them from bear creek quilting company we have them from needle and foot we have them from bernina i think together i know um what you call bear claw uh, bear claw 
Bear Creek just whoop. Sorry about that guys. My makeshift stand just broke. Um, that means I should wrap this up. Anyway, whoop. Okay, um, they just cut new kits. I know Bernie has um, sold out of a bunch, so she's added some different kits. Um, not sure um, what Bernina's situation is. And in August, yes, the question the question is, we are going to get fa um, instructions to cut all of the fabric in August. And that will help you decide which fabric you're going to use for which A, B, and C, and D. Um, but it's your quilt. Uh, you don't have to cut in August. If you prefer to cut as you go, you know, this is your quilt along. This is not, this is not mine. And we have an email again, please. So Diane, um, if you need to, if you can email me at mmdmysteryquilts at gmail.com, I believe I'm all caught up there. So email me there and I will make sure to get to you because, um, once again, I've probably fielded about 150 different questions over nine different platforms in the last day. So um, if I miss something, I do apologize. And that is it. I will, um, I enjoy seeing all of your, your fabric combinations. Please keep posting those and just test them out for yourself. And remember, there's nothing, there's no right or wrong. You can go and pick whatever you like and whatever your eye says is good. And if you need help, we're here to help. Okay. Well, with that, um, I will talk to you guys later. And if you have any further questions, you know, you can post them here. Please email them to me. It would be great. And I will check in with you in a few weeks. Thanks so much.